Good evening and welcome to Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Considering that we're on the eve of Halloween of prime interest tonight, treated to tricks. That's what happened Wednesday night in the third Republican presidential debate as the three CNBC moderators were unmasked as biased leftists, not objective interviewers. Now there's a common objective for the GOP candidates. Make some changes in the format of future debates. Dr. Ben Carson talked with our own Steve Malsberg about it last night. It was a gotcha interview uh, and a gotcha debate more than it was here are the candidates. We want to make sure that you get a chance to know them and understand what their policies are. The oh. latter of which would have, of course, been much more helpful. I think they learned from those two how to do it even worse. But uh, what I would uh, do and, and what I've asked uh, my staff to do is to reach out to the staffs of all the other candidates and uh, to, let's have a discussion about what debates really should be. Uh, we should be able to influence this process. That discussion will occur Sunday night, and there may also be some talk about what you and I will discuss right now with pollster Matt Towery, the CEO of Insider Advantage and author of the new book, News Vesting. Matt joins us tonight from Atlanta. Matt, earlier this afternoon, uh, the news came out that the Republican National Committee has severed debate ties with NBC News and canceled the February debate, citing a bad faith performance by CNBC Wednesday as their reason for making that cancellation. What do you think is going to come of that, Matt? Well, I mean, first of all, Reince Priebus had to do that because he was under such pressure. There was a huge debate within the RNC earlier this year, and a large faction wanted to cut organizations like CNBC and NBC out to begin with. He's had to do this, so that's where we are. It means the Republicans will have a format that might be a bit more friendly to them as we go into these critical months of January, February, and March. So Chairman Priebus didn't need to take a poll uh, to make this decision. <laughs> he had the pressure already. Well, enough on that. Let's go to the poll uh, commissioned by Newsmax.com. What have you guys found out here? As I take a look at it, this is really close, and I'm going to be interested in the margin of error. Marco Rubio wins the debate, 28.1% of respondents saying he was the winner. Ted Cruz second at 27%. Donald Trump, 19.4%. Uh, ben Carson, just a little under 10%. You know what I'm always interested in, Matt? The margin of error, because a lot of people said it was Cruz who came through, crystallizing that moment of bias in terms of what the media was up to, what the CNBC interviewers were doing on Wednesday night. Well, let's say this. Between Rubio and Cruz, the margin of error is far beyond the, the difference between the two. So you can basically say they're tied. Trump's just outside of it, so he had a good night as well. And after you get to that level, Carson plums, plummets way down. The rest of them are way down. So we had three winners, uh, basically, with Rubio and Cruz who emerged from a group that were considered second tier who are now at the top, at least in terms of the debate results. And then you had Trump who was able to sort of make his way through it, being more friendly uh, and a little more laid back, and he got 19%. So he did well in the debate as well. But clearly the two emerging people, uh, candidates in this case, are Cruz and Rubio. And so the question remains for future polling, what does this do to the race overall? Do Cruz and Rubio move up in that top tier with Trump and Carson? Uh, what do you suspect we'll see in the days ahead? Well, I don't know the days ahead, but of course the other part of our Newsmax poll, we asked the horse race question after that through Opinion Savvy, who are our polling partners. They showed Trump still had at 24 percent, Carson was at 20 percent, Cruz at 20 percent, and Rubio at 14. We basically now have, according to the Newsmax poll, the first poll to really do this, we have a top tier level of candidates who have moved away from all the other candidates. And that's basically Trump, Carson, uh, Cruz, and Rubio. And the rest of them are way behind, and I'm not sure. Now, now, let me just say this, because you're, you're going to have a guest, Jeb Bush, on in just a while. I've been around this business just like you, J.D., for a long time. I've seen candidates who are, quote, establishment candidates way down in the polls. But when they started spending their money in Iowa and other places, things totally reversed. So let me just say, this is not deciding who's going to be the nominee in March or April or May. But it tells us right now who the top tier is. And right now, those individuals who I just mentioned, 
based on the Newsmax poll, which I have a lot of confidence in, they're the top tier. Fair enough. To be continued, Matt Towery, author of the new book, News Vesting. We thank you for your time. Thank you. Take care.